Riders, welcome back to Sam's Bikes, where you know we only talk e-bikes, and today is the fifth episode of the Dream Build series, where we take this Levo base model up to race spec, and today we are looking at brakes, which I've put up there with suspension and tires as the most important part of your electric mountain bike. And just so you know, in this episode, we are going to talk about why I picked these brakes, what to look for when ordering your brakes, what are the other options on the market, and at the end, how to fit it. And before we crack on, let's thank the sponsors, Schwabi, making amazing electric mountain bike tires, Quadlock, the best smartphone holder for your electric mountain bike, your home office, and your car, and Insta360, the smallest action camera on the market, and riders, I have just got my new X3, which is a 360 action camera, and I cannot wait to show you how this works out on the trails. And we are at 29,825 subscribers. We are almost at 30,000. And riders, I thank each and every one of you riders for the support, it means so much. And if you don't know, to celebrate hitting 30,000 subscribers, we are giving away 3,000 euros worth of loot. You need to go back to this video where I start the Dream Build series and see how to enter. And good luck, and we're going to be drawing the winners in the next couple of weeks. And also, riders, there is a scammer at Sam's Bikes. Do not reply to anyone that's saying you've won. Do not send any money to anyone. I will never ask for money. And as I said, in a couple of weeks, we will be drawing the winners in a separate video. Okay, are we ready to see these new brakes? I'm super excited, and if you are a fan of the channel, you might think they're something, but they are not. So let's see this, let's go. Da -da! There you go, riders. We have gone TRP DHR Evo brakes, which I'm gonna say look amazing. The quality and the workmanship here, these are next level brakes. We've also got ourselves some TRP matchmaker adapters, a few adapters to make sure they fit onto the bike, and some TRP 203 rotors front and back. So why have I gone TRP brakes? Well, I have a bit of a man crush on Aaron Gwynn. Absolutely love Aaron Gwynn, he's an amazing rider. He started riding for TRP a couple of years ago. He actually had a bit of a hand in developing these brakes. Fast forward to now, and the World Cup, the Downhill World Cup, these brakes are popping up all over the place. The commensal race team is rocking these brakes, and Piron, one of the best mountain bike riders in the world, is rocking these brakes. So I thought I should put them on my dream build. And these brakes are not the easiest brakes to find in Europe. I actually found them at 23 degrees in Spain, which is run by Martin Whiteley. And if you don't know who Martin is, he used to run the Trek factory team and then ran the YT factory downhill team. And it was at the same time Aaron Gwynn was riding for those two teams. So another connection to Aaron Gwynn here, which I'm loving. And also Martin said that he will ship these brakes all over Europe so contact Martin for some great deals. And then we go on to the rotors. So these are TRP 203. And the interesting thing about these rotors is they're 2.3 millimeters thick. So they're a little bit thicker than the other rotors on the market. And a lot of riders out there think you can use like different rotors. So you could have SRAM rotors with Shimano brakes, which is true but I personally prefer to have the same rotors with the same brakes. And a lot of you legend riders that have watched the channel a fair bit probably would have thought I was gonna go for MT7 Magura brakes. They are sensational. I was gonna go for them. I actually ordered a pair. But I have had a little bit of problems with the levers over the last couple of months. I don't think they're that strong. And also bleeding them is a bit of a pain. I've heard really good things about bleeding and setting up these brakes. So fingers crossed, the setup goes well. So what are the other brakes on the market? All we need to do is look at the World Cup. So we have SRAM, Shimano, TRP are coming up there. And then we have Trick Stuff. And also some riders are riding Hopes. So what do I think of all those brakes? Well, Trick Stuff, 
are like 1,100 euros for a pair. I would love to try them. But also, Trick Stuff have been acquired by DT Swiss. So I think we're probably going to be seeing cheaper models coming out soon. Love to try them. And riders, if you have tried them, let me know what you think. And then we go on to Shimano. I love Shimano, but the feel of Shimano is very much on off. So you don't have that much modulation. And when I say modulation, it means when you move your brake finger, it's how much room you have from moving the, your brake finger until you actually get full braking. And then we go into Magura, which have been my go-to brakes for like the last three or four years. I love MT7s. They have an amazing feel. They have a really nice, like, medium point of modulation, I would say, between Shimano and SRAM. But as I said, those levers are a little bit weak. I would like to see like a stronger MT7 lever come out. And then we have SRAM. And I'm not a massive fan of SRAM. I find them kind of cheaply made. There's a lot of movement up and down on the lever. There's a lot of sponginess. So you have a lot of modulation, but it feels like in the SRAMs, you don't get the power until the end of the stroke. But saying that, you know, like we've got Troy Broslin, who's an amazing downhill racer, he rides for SRAM. So you can get really good results out of all those brakes. And then the last one we've got is Hope. And I personally don't find enough power with Hope. I love the modulation, I love the look, I love that if you damage a part of a Hope, you can actually order a specific part. But I haven't found that much power. But saying that as well, they have released a new lever in the last couple of months, which I haven't tried, but they're claiming more power. So riders, if you have tested that as well, let me know. And from the research I've done, these TRPs feel kind of between a Magura and a Shimano. So you have more modulation than a Shimano, a little bit less than an MT7, but let's test them and see how they get on. So now you wanna order some brakes and normally everyone's doing that online these days. So what to look for? Well, first off, when you're buying your actual brakes, it's pretty straightforward. You are looking for, if you're going Shimano or SRAM, you're looking for a four piston, not a two piston. So if you're looking at going Shimano XT brakes, for example, great brakes, love them, had them on a few bikes. You wanna look for four pistons in the uh, description when you're ordering those brakes. And also if you're buying a pair, you wanna make sure it's got four pistons front and back because they do sell pairs with four piston at the front and two piston at the back. So check that out, but that's pretty straightforward. And then we have brake caliper adapters. And this can seem confusing. And when I was learning to work on mountain bikes, this did confuse me, but it is pretty straightforward. So we have rotor size. So that's 140, 160, 180, 203, and 220. And what these do is they allow the rider to choose what size rotor they wanna run. So you need to know which one you need to get. And that really depends on your bike and what road are you gonna run. But just a little bit of a tip, if you are gonna stay, so you're changing the brakes, but you're gonna stay the same size rotor on your bike, they should, the original adapters of your bike should work. And also, if you're not sure, as I always do, go over to the Facebook group and ask there, because all the legend riders, there's so much knowledge out there and someone will definitely help you. And then we go to the disc brake rotors. And this is an interesting one. A lot of people think you can run like SRAM uh, rotors with Shimano brakes, and you can. But as I said, I like to run the same rotors with the same brakes. And also, I see a lot of the riders out there upgrading to 220 rotors. And what's my thought of 220 rotors? Well, I'm 183 kilos on a good day. I don't live in the Alps, and I also don't do like half an hour downhills. What the main benefit of a 220 rotor is gonna be, you're gonna get around 10% more braking power. But at the same time, you're gonna get around 10 to 15% less modulation. So for me, I like a 203 rotor front and back just because I've never had a problem and I like more modulation. And also, I've found 220 rotors, especially the SRAM ones, they bend so easily. So if you are a heavy rider 
or you are going for super long downhills, maybe check out 220 rotors. And the last part of the puzzle is matchmakers or adapters for your levers to run your dropper and your changer. And just a tip, they do come in Shram, Shimano, Magura specific, and left and right specific. And riders, back in the day when I was upgrading my YT decoy from Shram to Shimano brakes, I forgot to order these, and I had to sit on the sideline for a week while those parts arrived. So make sure you order these and get the right ones. And now riders, let's go ahead and fit these brakes to the dream build behind me. I'm gonna say, put it out there, I'm not the best mechanic in the world. This is actually a reasonably difficult job, and I'm also not gonna bleed these brakes in this video. One, because it's about a half an hour video, and two, I've never bled TRP brakes before, so I'm gonna learn how to do it, and in the next couple of weeks, I will upload a video on how to bleed these brakes. So, let's get to it. Okay, so we're ready to start installing the new brakes. We're gonna need some paper towel, a rag, bit of alcohol, some mineral oil. I'm gonna use Magura, because I got a whole bunch of it, and I've been told by a couple of mechanics that any mineral oil is fine on these TRP brakes. But what you wanna do, if it has different mineral oil, you wanna bleed and do a flush of the original oil and make sure you have 100% of the same oil. Then a couple of Allen keys, a T25, a multi-T. This is super important. You need a bleed block. So this is where we're gonna take the brake pads out. We're gonna use this to separate the pistons. Then, this is also really important, this is a specific TRP 20 euro funnel here, very expensive. I actually tried to order it off Amazon, the cheaper one, but I couldn't get any, so this is important. This is also really important. This is like a cable guide, so this has got magnets on it. It's got a whole bunch of things that will help us get the cable through the frame from the back to the front, so it's super important. Never used this either before, this is a new buy for me. You're gonna need a hose cutter. Now this is a specific one, it's about 20 euros. You can use a sharp knife, but what you wanna do is make sure you get a 100% perfect cut on the hose. If you don't, it's not gonna make a nice connection. I would recommend just getting one of these tools. And then you're gonna need a needle driver and this is another specific tool. If you don't have this, you can do it, but it is harder. I would just recommend getting this. If you're gonna work on brakes a lot, I would get this as well. And then you need a bleed kit from Tetro or a universal kit should do the job. You definitely don't need a drill, but I've got a drill with a T25 bit on it just to make it faster putting those rotors on. The original bolts that have come off the front of the forks here. And also, super important, make sure you take the magnet off the old wheels and install it on the new wheels. So first up, we're gonna take the wheels off and we're gonna install the rotors. Okay, so we've got the wheel off, we've got the new rotor in our hand. Right, it's super important. Always clean your hands. If you have gloves, wear gloves, and definitely don't put your fingers on this surface here. The grease on your fingers can definitely affect the braking. So we're gonna take this out ever so carefully without getting our fingers on it. And throw that over there. And now, wow, those rotors look sick. They're actually really thick. And the way you know which way the rotor goes on, so it's got a little bit of writing on the outside. So we're gonna put that onto our wheel. And also another tip, new rotors are gonna come with new bolts. Use those bolts because they have a little bit of Loctite on them. So we're gonna put all the bolts in and the magnet on, but we're not gonna tighten it up because we wanna make sure everything's centered and then we'll tighten it up at the end. Okay, you definitely don't need the drill, but it is faster. So we've got all the bolts on and we're just gonna tighten it up. And we don't, we don't go all the way to tension just get them nice and in there and then we'll tension up by hand. And there we go, there we go, front and back rotors on. The easiest part of the job. Now we get on to changing the brakes. Not really looking forward to it, but let's go. 
Okay, so we've done a little shuffle of the studio just to make it a little bit tidier. And the first job you would have is to take off the front brake. But we did that a couple of videos ago, so that is done. And the second part, and probably the hardest part of the whole installation, is we need to take the old brake out the frame, out the internal rooted cabling, and then put the new one in. Now, every electric mountain bike has different internal cable routing. So if you don't know, I would definitely ask on the forums, on the Facebook forums, how easy it is. On some bikes, you do need to drop the motor. I would definitely get one of these. This is a internal cable routing sort of device. It's got little cables here and a magnet, so you can actually pull the cable along. But I know that the Gen 3, because it is a sensational bike, has amazing internal cabling. So imagine inside the aluminum frame here, it has kind of like a plastic straw that is gonna guide the cables up. And how do I know this? Well, the legend Richard Butters, my go-to mechanic that I always ask all my questions for at Race Coast Cycles in the UK, he sent me a message. Actually, I called him and said, mate, how easy is it? And he said, dude, Sam, I know you're not a great mechanic, but you can do it. So we're not gonna need this. So that's going away. So first up, we wanna get our cable cutter and take off the rubber hosing here and just take it really close to the brake lever and cut it. Next, you wanna take out this, I've already done it, but it's actually like a little plastic casing that holds the cable still. It's super easy, you can take it out. And then also, we wanna loosen off the TCU. So we very carefully pulled the TCU out. And why you wanna do that is because the cabling is gonna come, it's gonna come all the way from here, it's gonna go up here, it's gonna go up onto the top tube, and it's gonna come out here. Then you need to push it down the top tube to come out here. So it's a little bit fiddly at the top part, but it is actually pretty easy, right? So that's all set up. So now we're gonna take off the old brake caliper. So now, brake caliper's loose. I've put all the adapters and all the bolts in a bowl here. And we're gonna quite simply just slowly pull this out, the caliper down here. Just, you see how easy that's sliding out, riders? That's because it has the internal cable routing. So the old brakes are out now, and riders, I stress, if you don't know that your frame has internal cable routing, I'd probably not try this, because you might have to drop your motor. So anyway, that's done. Let's get the new brakes in. Okay, so we've got the new calipers, and now we're just gonna feed this through quite slowly. If you feel it stop, don't really push it hard. Just pull it back a little bit, just gently push it through. Gonna grab my trusty iPhone here. I just wanna show you what I'm seeing in here. So basically, in there, this cable that you see just there, that is the brake cable. We wanna get it down this hole here and out this part here. Okay, riders, I just remembered something. Because I'm gonna be riding UK or moto style, so back brake on the left, front brake on the right, I'm not gonna be bringing the cable out on the same side. I'm gonna bring it out on the right-hand side of the bike so it makes a nice loop and makes it cleaner because we want to be able to get a full 180 turn and not break the cables and it's just gonna keep it in a nicer space. So basically what we wanna do is we wanna, on the other side of the bike, we wanna bring the cable down through the top tube out here and then reattach the plastic plugs that hold the cables in their place. And actually it's kind of better if you have small fingers, but it's got even smaller fingers than me because you can actually fiddle around inside where the TCU is to hold the, pl the plastic in place as you tighten it up. Okay, right, if the brake cable is through, it was actually really easy until we got to here, and then it was really fiddly. And if you're gonna run European style brakes, so back brake on the right, you're gonna have no problem. It comes out here, super easy. 
But because I ride uh, moto style or Australian or British style and the back brakes on the left, I wanted to bring the cable out on the right hand side and you have to get it in here. You gotta get it into this small hole which actually was quite fiddly in the frame. And if you have some tweezers or a little bit of poking sticks, it's gonna be easier or a wife with very small fingers. Now we're gonna put on the back caliper so we can get the correct length before we cut the brake. And I always find it easier when I'm doing this to put the back wheel in. So we'll go ahead and do that. Okay, so now we've got the back brake on and you'll see here, the cable's super twisted. Now what we wanna do ever so slightly is release the Allen key. This is called the banjo here. And we wanna keep this line straight. So we wanna release it a little bit you don't wanna release it too much or you will get brake fluid coming out of it. As you'll see, the banjo is a little bit better here. We will make final adjustments of that. But I like to put the caliper on with the wheel so I can just see the spacing. Sometimes we make a mistake here and we put too much spacing on the caliper and you're not getting all the power. So you're not using all your brake pads. So the idea is to get the caliper using all the brake pads but without rubbing on the rotor. So now we put the adapter in, we haven't got the bolts on yet. And you wanna look at the back of the caliper and the front of the caliper, it's super hard to see in the video, but you wanna make sure it is sitting really close to the top of the caliper, but without rubbing. And this TRP looks perfect. So I'm, sometimes I need to put a few washers in here, like very small washers just to do that fine tuning, but this looks perfect. Now we're gonna put our bolts in and we're gonna get it hand tight, but we're not gonna torque it up because we still need to change the angle of the banjo. Okay, so the rear caliper's on. We put a little bit of tension on here and there's a little bit of rubbing, but we will fine tune that. But you do wanna look for, you wanna make sure there is no real loud rubbing because it could be hitting the top caliper. And as I said, you wanna put a spacer in there. All right, so we're gonna take the wheel off, fix the banjo, make that straight, then we're gonna cut down the cable. So there we go, I'm doing a close up for you riders with my phone here. Now, I wouldn't make this cable too tight. I'd give a little bit of a bend in it because remember, we have the movement of the suspension, so we wanna give it a little bit of play. But definitely get the banjo facing the right direction. And now very simply, we're gonna open up the brake, the back brake, we're gonna put it on and clamp it up. And this is definitely uh, not, to set the cockpit up, because we're gonna be moving this brake lever around a lot. We just wanna get it on the bike. So the rear lever's on and done that look pretty. Super high engineering here, it feels really good. And next we need to cut down this cable. And riders, I would definitely sit on the side of caution with this. If you cut this cable too short and you crash and you break your, your rear cable, it's right over. And also these cables are like 50, 60 euros. So you don't wanna cut them too short. Okay, so what we wanna do is we wanna have a look at the cable and think where it looks pretty. <laughs> looks kinda of pretty there, but now pretty is not that important. Let's see if we can do a full turn. Yep, we can go there and we can go there. So I would say that that, maybe it's a little bit long. Let's go a little bit shorter. And now it's time to cut the cable. And riders, if you don't have this, then get one. I would say if you're gonna work on brakes a lot. You can do it with a Stanley knife, but you need to put the cable in a vise and you need to get it 90 degrees straight. Very important. Another little hack, riders, before we cut the cable, let's gaffer tape it to the handlebars because this is going to be full of oil and we wanna keep it in the air. With any luck, we might not need to bleed these brakes if we get it right. What do you reckon of my hack, legends? <laughs> I'm not sure how I'm gonna get that off without getting the oil out of it, that's the problem. Now we have this nice and straight, the cable. We go in with our cable, with our cable cutter, go just above where we said, get it straight and put a bit of pressure on it. And there we go. And we have an open cable. 
And in the mounting kit from TRP, we have the dust cover, we have the bolt, we have the olive, and then we have the barb, which is in another bag, which is kind of strange. But this is important, the order. First off, we want to get the dust cover on. Check. Then we want to get the small bolt facing up. So we're going to thread it into the lever. Then we want the olive riders. And this olive is specific for TRP. And I did speak to Richard Butters this morning because I thought all olives were the same. But check, you have different olives for different brakes. So they're not all compatible. So olive goes in there like so. And now we're gonna put in the pin. And as I said, we've got a specific tool for this. There's also a few hacks online, but as I said, if you wanna do a good job, you should have the right tools, really. Okay, so you push it in by hand and you grab your needle press. And it's basically just clamping and it just pushes it down all the way in. Now, another important part, so many important parts. This is actually quite difficult, riders. I hope you're still with me. So we have angled the brake up here to try and make it so all the oil will be sitting back into the lever. And we're gonna very quickly take this off and try and get this in. But normally, riders, nine times out of 10, you need to do a bleed on the brakes after you do this. But sometimes you can get it right. So let's have a crack. So. We undo, we push that hard in. Then we get our olive, we put the olive in there as well. Then we get our screw and we start screwing it. And we have a little bit of oil on our fingers, which is not a good sign, right? It's... So we wanna get our eight mil. And you want to tighten this up. And the first thing you're going to want to do is pull the brakes. Don't do that because we don't have a wheel in. So let's put the wheel in and see if we have a little bit of power. As I said, we normally need to bleed. Okay, so we have the back brake installed, but does it work? Let's test it out. Oh yeah, oh yeah, we got some stopping power. You'll see here, the brake lever is almost at the bar, so we are gonna need to do a bleed. But I'll learn how to do that. I would do that in a couple of videos time. And now we wanna go onto the front brakes. But riders, I'm not gonna bore you with that. It's pretty much exactly the same, but easier because we don't need to do the internal cabling. The only thing you wanna really make sure is the cable comes on the inside, goes through the little cable holder here. And riders, we are almost there next week. We're doing running gear, dropper, and something else special, and then the bike will be done. So riders, thank you so much for your support. If you haven't entered the competition, please do so. Smash that subscribe button, hit the like button. It all means a lot. It really does help out, and you stay safe out there, and we're gonna see you next week.